Hi there, and thank you for sharing some time with the National Small Business Association and our partner Avast today to discuss the importance of layered cybersecurity, a must in today's increasingly online business world. Avast has a suite of really amazing small business solutions, including anti-malware, antivirus protection, built-in VPN to keep devices and data secure, and real-time protection to help you assess and solve any issues quickly and automatically. We've got uh, some great speakers joining us today, two senior sales engineers, Michael Buff and Chris Walter. Together, they've got over 15 years of experience in cybersecurity with expertise in remote monitoring, management, cloud management platforms, and cybersecurity trends and best practices. Michael and Chris will walk us through how to best integrate security solutions, setting up cloud management platforms, unified threat management, and much more. I'm Molly Day here with NSBA, a staunchly nonpartisan organization fighting for your small business in Washington, D.C. We'd like this webinar to be a conversation, and we encourage you to submit your questions through the Q&A, I'm sorry, through the chat panel. Uh, we do ask you to keep the chat clear so we can best prioritize, prioritize how those questions come in. You can also email me at mday, D-A-Y, at nsba.biz if you have any questions and would prefer to submit them that way. Uh, with that, I would like to uh, turn it over to you, Michael Buff. Thank you, Molly, for that intro. And again, thank you for joining our presentation. Um, today, Chris and I would like to talk to you about layered endpoint security made easy for your business. No matter where your devices are located, with over 435 million plus active users, Avask delivers cybersecurity solutions for today's modern workplace. At Avast, or Avast is founded on uh, providing cybersecurity and half of our staff is dedicated to research and development to drive innovation, ensure uh, best-in-class security solutions. Our mission is to build a safer digital world for your business. Yeah, Buff, uh, you know, with a tremendous spike in zero-day vulnerabilities in the wild, just year over year, companies are finding it nearly impossible to keep up. Hackers are evolving quicker than and many organizations can update their security solutions. Uh, we have a lot of remote and hybrid workforces now. Uh, with a vast next generation, um, next gen security engine, uh, we use behavioral detection, cloud based machine learning, and signature based detection methods to deliver many layers of protection that work hard to keep your business safe so that you don't have to. Avast has continuously received top industry recognition from uh, AV Comparatives, Approved Business Protection, Top Rated Product, Anti-Phishing Certification, um, as well as highest quality of anti-malware products for SMBs. That's why 740,000 businesses trust Avast for their layered protection. With over 30 years of innovation, we provide uh, one of the largest, most diverse threat detection networks. Today, it is hard for businesses to stay on the leading edge of emerging threats uh, and new technologies. Therefore, Avast protects 740,000 businesses, providing them with updates every six to seven minutes uh, and 21 plus threat feeds to help better protect their users. Let's take a couple of moments to, to answer a couple of poll questions um, that should be appearing on your screen here momentarily. Um, I believe the first question should be on your screen now. Yes, I see that there. Um, globally, how many new pieces of malware are detected every day? Take a few moments there for everyone to put in uh, your best guesstimate there. Hi, this is Molly. While everybody's doing a poll, I did want to mention that um, all lines have been muted and we're going to keep them that way just to ensure there's no kind of background noise. We do have quite a few people on the line. So um, if you have a question, you can raise your hand using the, um, if you click on participants and then down below, you can do raise hand and we can try and address that or you can put something into the chat, but um, we will be keeping all lines muted. So thank you for letting me jump in there. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, Molly. All right. It looks like uh, activity is slowing down. So um... I'll give it a couple more seconds just in case anybody wants to change their answer. All right, it looks like it's pretty uh, steady now. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, end the poll and we can actually share the results. 
Yeah, so when we're looking at how many uh, pieces of malware are detected on the, the daily basis, uh, Buff, um, does that uh, show the answer there? Uh, it, it, uh, it doesn't highlight the answer, but it looks Okay, like so the answer would be, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, 560,000 was the answer. Uh, we were all going towards the high side there. Um, a lot of malware. There are over a half a million pieces uh, generated uh, and detected uh, every day in general. And we will see if we can jump to question two here. And that should be populating on your screen. Yeah. How many malware attacks does a vast block on a monthly basis? Um, if we were looking at, you know, 560,000 pieces of new malware detected every day, how much are we stopping or are we stopping uh, on that monthly basis? Looks like we're, again, a pretty good mix there of uh, thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, still a little bit of activity, so we'll we'll give it about about five seconds here to for in the poll. All right, so it looks like it's it's slowed down. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll and share that result. All right. So for the number of attacks blocked uh, by a vast on a monthly basis, we're looking at one and a half billion attacks being blocked. Uh, so uh, over a half a million new pieces coming out um, every day. And you know, when you do the math there, that shows that we're blocking uh, many, many of those attacks many different times uh, every month. Uh, so constantly uh, guarding our users against attacks, new or known. Yeah. All right. And poll question three, just a couple more here. I'm going to launch that one. Yeah, how many executable files does Avast analyze monthly? So if we were just looking at the executables uh, that are out there, uh, you know, just on a monthly basis, what is Avast looking at? The number of files here, 15, 10, 25, or 30 million. All right, looks like it's uh, oh, we have some people changing or adding. <laughs> All right, we'll give it about another five seconds here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead in the in the poll yeah. and looks like most people are results. leaning towards the uh, the high side there, Buff. Um, and on this one, it is 30 million. Um, executable files every month, nearly a million files a day uh, flow through a BAST uh, to be checked to see if it's a corrupted or a um, malicious file. Yeah, and Chris, I would also like to add, I mean, if you're able to see the screen as well, that uh, there are 300 million plus new files checked monthly as well. So some wow. really high numbers in there to kind of help, you know, just to see where Avast is going and, and how we're able to help and kind of protect uh, your, your organizations. And then for our last poll question, um, it should be launching on the screen now. Yeah. How many attempted connections to malicious sites does Avast block monthly? So on a monthly basis, how many of our users are out there trying to um, reach a site that could potentially be dangerous? All right, we'll give it just a couple more seconds here. It looks like it's slowing down a little bit. Got about a little over half the people participating. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll and share those results. Now on this one, you'll be surprised to know that we are actually looking at over 500 million sites blocked on a monthly basis. Hundreds of millions of sites being blocked uh, of people clicking on links that would, if they were successfully joined to that site would likely lead to some sort of infection uh, or malicious activity occurring. Uh, so quite a bit uh, of activity going out there. This just goes to show how much work Avast is putting into protecting users every day. I mean, we know that since 2007, 
7% of every website Google has tested has been for malware has been infected. So 7% of all the sites they're testing uh, since 2007. In a time of COVID-19's uh, epidemic, uh, we have seen a significant jump in malicious sites. With so many emerging threats, most of the companies that I've spoken with are simply looking for cost-effective solutions to address multiple threats and concerns. And these concerns are all centered around being breached. And you know these are very valid concerns. So today, uh, I think we're going to discuss a vast solutions and show you how we can address these growing concerns. Uh, most people aren't necessarily ready for it. Uh, when a breach occurs, uh, it can be a very uh, confusing time. <clears throat> we had a customer recently in Tennessee share their experience about a breach and how it happened. Uh, it was a 911 call center. Uh, they were hit with the Dr. December virus. Uh, this is a virus well known or, or known to encrypt all major file types. Uh, the IT manager, Marty, uh, drew a really vivid picture of the pressure he felt in those moments, the anxiety that kept rising up uh, after discovering the breach, and the massive confusion that set, went, that set in when they realized, horror of horrors, their backup folders were empty. 23 years worth of data not backed up. Law enforcement got involved, the FBI and recovery specialists were called in. As a matter of fact, the very first uh, recovery specialist quoted a little over $36,000 just to put boots on the ground. The next company was much lower, but in the end, they were still looking at over 56 hours of billable service from that restoration uh, company, not including the hours that their internal employees spent. And it took five days to get the network back up and running. And this was all kicked off by a notification received from CCleaner Cloud in regard to activity and software being changed on the network. In this instance, CCleaner Cloud identified specific issues, potential risks, uh, which triggered an email that was received within one minute of the initial breach. The IT manager was able to take action that limited the damages. Though limited, they still faced extensive billing for the cleaning and restoration of the network. And the IT manager said that CCleaner Cloud uh, was their choice because of its low cost and event monitoring services uh, that are built in. In general, CCleaner Cloud's proactive versus reactive optimization saves him time and money. And after this attack, he advises all companies, all organizations to have a strong defense that includes antivirus, patch management, a cloud backup system that's tested, and CCleaner Cloud. With CCleaner Cloud, you can see from the central management dashboard, you can optimize all of your devices from anywhere uh, that you um, would need to provide that type of service. It gives you the ability to schedule a historically reactive approach uh, and makes this service proactive, stopping devices from having easily preventable degraded performance. The story most often heard in regard to using an optimization tool like CCleaner, I know you probably all heard it or you've said it yourself, hey, my computer's running really slow, it's taken forever to open anything. So you call IT and they come and they run CCleaner or an optimization tool, and then you're back running again at peak performance. The issue with this story is how long did it take them to say something? How much time or productivity was lost before the issue was identified? And then how much time does an IT person have to spend resolving the issue versus addressing you know, more mission critical tasks? With CCleaner Cloud, devices stay at peak performance and your IT staff can focus on those more important things. It's not just an optimization tool though. As I'd mentioned from the 911 call center's experience, the manager was notified within one minute of the initial malicious activity via an email. Needless to say, they really like that it provides this monitoring capability uh, at the network level. And you can see uh, on the screen now, we have a list of different activities 
everything that is checked in the first column shows up in the events tab. So from your dashboard, you can always go and look for specific types of events on groups of computers or specific PCs, but you can also assign emails to be triggered when software is being installed or uninstalled, when connections are being made, logged into or logged off of, uh, so that you can stay on top of these types of activities. Now, beyond optimization and monitoring, CCleaner Cloud also provides a complete insight into the software and hardware uh, that are in each device. You can also run reports. This simplifies the IT department's tasks of identifying out-of-date operating systems, out-of-date devices, uh, et cetera. Along with the insight as to what is already installed on a PC, CCleaner Cloud also pushes out several common MSI files, such as Chrome or Evernote. Um, and when used in conjunction uh, with Dropbox, it can push out any custom MSI, making it a deployment platform, as well as those additional layers of security uh, that we discussed. So when you use CCleaner Cloud or its well-known ability to keep your devices optimized for performance, you can also feel secure that those additional layers of security and insight will be there. We have many customers who use it because of its low cost and additional layers of security to take a look at some of the other security options, Michael, let's take a deeper dive into Avast Endpoint Security Services. Thanks, Chris. So <clears throat> one of the things that you can see is more layers typically equals better security. And you can even see that with our antivirus solution that we're gonna be talking about here. Um, one of the things I wanna point out, you know, you can see we have a remote access shield. That is really designed to help protect your users when a hacker tries to use a legitimate application like remote desktop with uh, users um, uh, when, when when users are working remote or and even in a hybrid location where some are working you know locally some are working remote having that remote access shield scanning the ports of remote desktop making sure that it's legitimate uh, not being used by a malicious uh, application is very important because remote desktop is typically seen as a legitimate application. But also with the growing trend of working uh, remote and hybrid working, having the ability to scan different layers is beneficial. Uh, as you can see, we have layers uh, and that's with our core shields, uh, the behavior shield, file shield, web shield, email shield. Um, and these shields will help with zero day threats ransomware and fake antiviruses, just to name a few. Now, um, with having these configurabilities within our endpoint uh, a antivirus and other services uh, we have going to be talking about soon, we also want to talk about how to easily manage those devices, no matter where those devices are, are located, remote or in your network. And, and that is typically done through our vast business hub, um, and it's an integrated cloud-based security platform uh, for businesses and their IT team to utilize just to kind of make their life uh, easier. Uh, this uh, portal or dashboard or hub uh, platform will give you intuitive management dashboards, giving you the ability to see all of the alerts, no matter where those devices are. Addressing issues without having to commute or remote in to those devices to see what the issue is, you can go ahead and give them a resolution pretty quick. Um, you have network discovery with remote deployment so that you can easily get these devices installed and managed. Um, other things on here is device and policy management. So maybe you have multiple locations and devices that need different settings than the one next to it. You would have the ability to customize those templates to make it fit your needs, change scan times, updates, uh, exclusions, things in that nature. And another feature here that I wanna talk about that uh, has been out for a little while is our USB protection, uh, which is really designed to give you the ability through a policy in that service to block 
the USB protection or to block the USB so that data doesn't get to uh, taken or somebody bringing a USB device or their phone from their house and plugging it in to one of your devices and infecting it with malware, uh, something in that nature. So all of this is actually going to be able to be managed from that single uh, pane of glass, um, giving you that ease management. You know, maybe you're working at a coffee shop uh, or they are, you're still going to be able to, uh, to manage those devices. Now, um, with that, with that uh, business hub, there will be solutions for small and growing businesses. And uh, there's essential uh, premium and ultimate that we're going to talk about here in a, a few moments. But with this, it does give you flexible uh, device management for your Windows, your Mac, and even mobile devices. Uh, this would give you, if you wanted to unmanage, maybe you're, you only have five, 10 devices and it's you want to be unmanaged, you can do that. Uh, you can have the cloud platform for simple one device or hundreds of devices. You can have that cloud management um, application as well and be able to offer these services that we're getting ready to talk about or have already talked about um, as well. But first, I want to kind of break down uh, these three uh, solutions and security solutions for you, uh, so so you kind of have a, a better understanding of those. So let's start with our essential uh, business security. Um, it basically is designed to uh, protect your business against viruses, ransomware, spyware, zero second threats or zero day threats, uh, Wi-Fi network vulnerabilities. And, and other things. Um, and as I mentioned before, we do have four shield defenses. Uh, those would be like the file shield. Uh, that is actually scanning programs and files that are saved on your, your PC or uh, on those devices looking for malicious threats in real time. Uh, and that's really going to be a theme for the other few that I'll talk about. The web shield, scanning websites, looking for malicious scripts that could be downloaded on your machine. If it detects it, it will abort that connection to help prevent it from even touching that PC. Mail shield, scanning your emails for incoming and outgoing emails. And of course, the behavior shield. Uh, this is monitoring all processes on your device, uh, looking for sus suspicious behavior. It's really designed to look and say, hey, does this look like a known threat? And if it does, what action would you like to take? And these are configurations that you can put in place, typical quarantine or, or fix automatically. Um, those four shield defenses are real time. I do want to add in a cyber capture, uh, which is the very next one. Um, it is actually designed to, to analyze rare and suspicious files. Um, it will actually kind of run such a file and, and send that to our, our threat labs, but it will also run it in a virtual environment to make sure it is safe. And since it is being ran in a virtual environment, it's not, not going to affect your machine and slow it down, anything like that. Now, when you jump to the premium security, uh, it combines what we had in the essential per se, uh, and then it adds VPN and that USB protection that I was talking about just a few moments ago. Uh, so basically that secure line VPN, um, it will provide a private tunnel through the internet that encrypts your data and secures your connection when using public Wi-Fi. So when you're at a cafe, an airport, uh, maybe at a customer site, However, it will allow you to VPN and mask that data to better protect you as well. And as I said before, you have that USB protection that you can enable and configure. So you can block all USB uh, devices, anything with really a storage uh, bank in there. Uh, you can allow all and then block certain things or block everything and allow certain uh, USBs, maybe ones that your organization has provided and said, these are safe. You could do those configurations. And then lastly, uh, we have our ultimate uh, business security. Um, and with ultimate business security, we have actually added patch management uh, for you for the ease of management for automatic scans of both Microsoft and third-party applications. Uh, our patch solution can help with automatic deployments to help reduce uh, complexity. And you'll probably see like uh, with that, 
on the next slide, what makes patching so important uh, to your business? Well, when you're looking at this, it's a, a lot of it is complexity. You know, if you look on the far right, it's a simplified console. If you don't have a simplified console, it will be overwhelming. You know, if you're looking at thousands of patches, too many patches, if you're looking at thousands of patches and trying to prioritize those, it could be overwhelming. You probably don't have enough time in the day to do that. So then the perceived need uh, isn't there, even though you understand there are consequences and vulnerabilities at stake, it just makes it really difficult. And then lastly, interrupts operation. Well, with our patch solution, there are scheduled times that you can do it. So you could do these after hours, but really a lot of people don't want to do these because maybe they have them set to automatic and they don't want to reboot them in the middle of the day. And now their machines are down for X amount of time. That is where um, some of our schedules and flexibility with those schedules will help you get those after hours. Now, just a couple of like, did you know, these are some numbers that really kind of floored me a little bit that 57% of data breaches are attributed to poor patch management, maybe not having a best practice, maybe not having a console that allows you to see to automate those. On average, it takes 102 days for an enterprise to deploy critical software applications. And 86% of reported vulnerabilities come from third-party applications. I remember when it was Microsoft that everybody was worried about Microsoft. Now you can actually see that third-party applications are the, the majority of that. Now, when you're looking at um, our, our chart here, the zero-day threat in the wild chart, you can see in like 2018 that Microsoft is uh, is the, the, the top person with the zero day threats. There were uh, 12 zero day threats. Eight of them was from Microsoft. But when you start looking at 2019 and 2020 and even 2021, you will actually start seeing that third party applications like Google, for example, is taking over the Microsoft thing. There are more third party uh, zero day threats in the wild than that are from Microsoft. To kind of give you a little bit of an example, back in March of 2021, there were over 30,000 organizations that were exposed to a single Microsoft breach. It was the eighth instance of a nation, a national uh, state cyber attack against civil organizations and businesses. Uh, and Microsoft had reported over the previous 12 months. So just imagine Microsoft is not even the top zero day threat anymore and it still affected over 30,000 organizations. So just imagine adding in the other uh, third party organizations, what, how it could affect your business um, at that particular time. All right. Now, let's take a look at the threat level timeline that I have up here. Um, you can actually see that pre zero day. Okay, so when you're looking at the pre zero day threats, Yes, you may have a patch management solution in place, just like the 57% uh, percent, um, attributed to poor patch management. And there has been some applications or, OS or operating system that has been exploited, or in some cases, uh, you know of the exploit, but haven't patched it yet. Uh, then you get to the point where you are able to apply the patch for that exploit. Uh, doing so as soon as possible will reduce that risk. That's really kind of what we're seeing here. I, I want to kind of look through some of these, these days. So zero to 14 days. If you have not patched the exploit, your risk of the exploit spreading across devices starts to increase. When you go to 14 to 28 days, um, we see 50% of exploits have occurred throughout the network. Um, at that point, you really don't know the full extent of the data and information that has been exploited. Um, and then, you know, referring back to a couple of slides ago, um, you're getting closer to that 102 days. So at 40 to 60 days uh, of not patching, you're looking at about a 90% um, exploits have occurred uh, and, a, and it takes 102 on average for enterprises to deploy those critical patches. And then at 120 days um, of not patching, you can safely say you're in the worst case scenario um, and we have seen and heard what happens. 
Uh, many um, have had to close uh, close their doors uh, because they were exposed and exploited uh, by hackers. And the kind of the 911 um, was one of those. Luckily, they had the the means to to be able to resolve that, and they were only down five days. But a lot of organizations they're they're down for a lot longer uh, than five days. Um, at that point, so how many days can can you withstand at that point? Um, now, looking at um, uh, the patch management, um, Avast provides a simple solution for you uh, with our integrated patch. With the increased remote workers and threats, having the ability to auto-approve patches, uh, having them uh, tested uh, before you push them out, scheduling them to happen after hours will, will definitely help close the vulnerabilities within those applications. Um, as we have uh, been uh, saying all along, multiple layers of security are needed. But the only true way to guarantee access to data that has been encrypted is to have a, a secure cloud backup. Your, in, your endpoints will experience loss and corruption, corrupted data and, and come under attack. It's not, at a, it's not a question of if, it's just a matter of when. Yeah, you know, Michael, in that uh, story I shared earlier with the 911 call center, you know, they had a backup service in place. Um, it just hadn't been functioning properly, and it wound up costing them about two years worth of data. Luckily, they had been transitioning to a new system, and so only two years worth of data uh, was at risk, um, but they lost it all. Um, if they had had all 23 years there, um, you know, hard to say, but clearly having a backup service is crucial. And to ensure that you are prepared uh, that when a file is corrupted for one reason or another, it's a great best practice to go through the actual recovery process on a quarterly to semi-annual basis. Uh, this confirms not only the backup's existence, but it also eliminates the confusion of the process uh, when it comes down to crunch time. We all know the benefits of protecting our business's data and how it protects our business's future. Um, we, you have to be able to quickly uh, recover when a file is encrypted for one reason or another. Um, at Avast, we offer a very easy to set up auto backup process that is centrally managed from the same dashboard as our antivirus and patch management services. With cloud backup, it's very easy to select what is being backed up, where it is uh, being backed up to. Very easy to deploy this solution out if you're already utilizing one of our other services, uh, but also extremely simple to include uh, at the same time as AV and patch management services on, on that deployment. Unlimited file versioning uh, is available as well as comprehensive reporting uh, on your backups. Now, should you ever have a need to restore a remote user, there's also a tool included for that. The Business Hub has a free remote control tool built in. The free version is limited to a handful of timed sessions, but there are subscriptions available if you want unlimited sessions and time. Uh, you would be able to access any device that has a hub agent installed on it with the active remote control service uh, for remediating any issue. Utilizing this tool in your endpoint security platform increases the efficiency, reduces vendors, reduces cost. Most of our customers say that the tool exceeds uh, their satisfactions uh, because their satisfaction level is expected uh, because of the central management one dashboard for everything, nearly everything. With the premium remote control, you'll have remote administration over devices. Uh, improves your ability to push out executable files, which can be hard to share. Um, file transfers are very easy. You can actually record the sessions so that those password reset sessions can be emailed back out versus having to have the IT person walk through them uh, dozens and dozens of times. Uh, you can do chat and voice sessions uh, during uh, the remote connection, uh, as well as run reports so you know who is logging into whose computer and when.
And with all of that, that really brings us to the end uh, of our presentation today. So I'd like to hand it back over to uh, Molly and say thank you for your time. Great. Thanks so much, Michael and Chris. That's some really helpful information. Uh, I do want to remind everybody, if you have questions, please feel free to put them into the chat, or you can click on the participants uh, tab. And then at the bottom of there, there's um, a little buttons that say, raise your hand if you've got a question. Um, the first one we have is from Lynn, and he asks, do you have rolling patch options? So I believe by the rolling patch options, and Lynn, uh, correct me if I'm off base on this, uh, you're asking, can you delay uh, and have the previous versions installed. Uh, so this would be to push out the most recent version. You can ignore if you don't want to rely on the Avast secondary testing of these patches. A lot of times you'll see that rolling option uh, instituted to make sure you don't push out any untested patches, something that hasn't been verified as of yet. But we eliminate a lot of those worries by doing the secondary testing um, and allow you to then push them out on a, a rolling schedule or ignore a specific type of test. Like if you want to ignore all Adobe patches, uh, you could do that very easily. And then you do your own testing in house on a few devices before rolling it out uh, to the rest of the network. Uh, so if that didn't specifically answer your question, Lynn, feel, feel free to reach back out to us again, let us know or schedule some time with us. Great, thank you. And I do have a Buff, couple- Did you have anything else on, on that? Uh, no, I was gonna um, kind of, add on to that just saying if you did have questions you know let us know reach out to you know account manager we'll you know we'll, we can do a demo and that might help answer a little bit of your questions as well i i do have a couple of emailed questions this one uh asks do you offer protection for mobile devices uh correct yes with with the avast business hub uh with i believe the essential premium and ultimate there is mobile to protection for android and um, ios not managed through the hub. Yeah. Okay, let me just click over to the chat. Um, all right, the last question I'm seeing here is, um, are, am I able to trial the products we saw today? Yes, every service is available for trial and we would be happy to set that up for you or with you um, in conjunction. Buff and I do that uh, all the time as far as setting up the initial trials and helping people get the settings or their policies um, to work the way they want them to. And I believe there's a vendor page on the NBA, uh, and SBA uh, website that they can fill out a form and that will come to us as well. So we can have an account manager reach back, reach back out to you um, just to talk about how to set the trial up and uh, to get somebody like myself or Chris on the call to, to help assist with installations and configurations, et cetera. Right. Well, I do want to, um, I, I'm not seeing any other questions coming in. So I think what I'd like to do um, is just see if you've got any any final comments, Michael or Chris, any closing tips or, or suggestions for folks on the line? Um, we look forward to, to working with you and being able to offer any types of uh, resources uh, that you might need. Uh, this can be confusing uh, when you're looking at adding additional layers. So don't think any question is too simple to ask. We're, we're always glad to address any questions. Yeah, and, and definitely, if you if you do have questions or want to know best practice, maybe for your scenario, your business, because not every business is identical, so they do may need a little bit of tweaking uh, on maybe patching or backups. Let us know; we're more than happy to help and um, give you what we what we know. Great. Well, I do want to mention to everybody on the line, we will be following up with, with all of you with the slides, uh, a link to the video, and um, some, some other useful information from the folks over at Avast. So um, keep an eye on your emails for that. It's probably going to come in later today or tomorrow. Um, and, uh, you know, be sure to follow us. We're constantly putting out good information. Avast sends us a lot of really useful articles about tips and tricks for cybersecurity and and things that you can be doing um, to, to make sure that you're very well protected. So um, thank you so much, Michael and Chris and the entire team over at Avast for being such great supporters of small business. We appreciate your time today. And uh, to all of you participants joining us today, thank you. We know you've got a lot of stuff going on and, and we appreciate you spending some time with us. Um, be sure to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. We're at NSBA Advocate. And um, subscribe to our weekly advocate. Those are the articles that come out uh, every Wednesday, typically, uh, all the things happening policy in DC, as well as great resources from our good partners like Invest. So thanks, everyone, and have a great rest of your day.